This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole Distillery and their one-of-a-kind Kentucky bourbon and rye whiskeys. I've been talking about this jazz for a while now. What I love about these guys is each one of their expressions is made from distinct one-of-a-kind recipes using specialty malted grains that you won't find anywhere else, friends. They're small batch. A lot of people say they're small batch, but they're not. That could be, you know, a thousand barrels. Not these guys. Not these rabbits. They got under 15 barrels, so you know the quality is going to be there in every single bottle. Um, this uh, I was sipping on during the episode. This is the Boxer Grail. I do love this. I love all the expressions, but Boxer Grail I've kind of switched to as one of my favorites. That's our Sour Mash Rye. And if you're looking to get into rye, this stuff is very, very good. I got to tell you, uh, it's named after Louisville's rich boxing heritage. Put your dukes up, dude. Um, this is very, very good stuff. I really like it. They got their high ride double uh, malt bourbon. That's the high gold. I've had that a lot. <clears throat> they also have the Cave Hill Four Grain Triple Malt Bourbon. And to, to top it off, they got the Derringer PX Sherry Finished Bourbon that's finished in sherry cast, of course. And every single one of these is in toasted and charred barrels. Okay, people say they do that. They really do it. You can go see on their website for yourself. You can watch a video of them doing it. Uh, they got a low entry point that's never chill filtered as it should be. So do yourself a favor. Jump down the rabbit hole with me, friends. Go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly. Rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly. Use the promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. Or just go to rabbithole.com. Find out where it's sold and available in your area. Buy it and drink it responsibly. Have fun. What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today. Like my man Steve Harvey done say, it's Neil Brennan. Good old Bren dog. Neil Brennan's got a special coming out. It's out. What am I saying? Coming out. It's out right now. It's called Blocks. It's on Netflix. It's incredible. We spoke about it. In fact, it came out while we recorded the episode. Uh, and Neil was jittery and, and jumpy as he is. So go watch Blocks right now on Netflix for Neil Brennan. And for me, Boston, New Year's Eve. Let's go, baby. I'm doing New Year's Eve and New Year's Eve Eve shows in Boston at the Wilbur Theater. I think it's on Tremont Street, dude. Go to andrewsantino.com for the tickets, andrewsantino.com for those tickets to come see me in Boston on New Year's Eve or New Year's Eve Eve. Hurry up and grab them tickets. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's the return of the Blocks King himself. It's Neil Brennan. Neil Brennan, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming on the show, Neil. Buddy. Buddy, buddy. Oh, buddy, buddy. Boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Your Netflix special? 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 Mm -hmm. Your Netflix special, Blocks, is out right now. And he was telling me before we started that uh, he's got a lot of feels because as we're filming this, it's about to air. When you see it, it'll it's be eight fifty in Los Angeles, which means it's eleven fifty in mm, mm. East Coast. You can say New York, mm, Newark. Newark, Newark, New Jersey. It's eight. It's eleven fifty. Um, it's about and, to air right now. Yeah, Are you excited? So, yeah, but I'm. It's. I'm excited. I'm sentimental. I'm because. The truth, Andrew. <laughs> may I? Oh, never may I get serious. to the truth, Andrew? Is buddy. that we only make a few of these in our lives? Mm -hmm. Carlin made twenty or nineteen or eighteen. Did he or something. really make that many? Yeah. Um, what? How many were good? Well, that's the question. Five, mm. six. I'm of the mind that the well, I would go with a Burr, Dave, Chris, Burr, Louie have made uh they're getting around five four or five in that area i think f it's like it's like tv series it's i like think you can do f i really believe you can do four very very good ones yeah but i yeah that's exactly what I, that's what i mean any good tv show i think there's like the max is six seasons after that you're like this is this is a cash out yeah it's sick more than six of anything is a lot it's just a ton that's too much mm -hmm. but 19 or whatever he did yeah no thanks max look up how many specials that George Carlin did. I just think it's one of those things where you're like, uh, how, I don't know, how relevant can you, like, look, we just talked about him, how old he is and how old you feel when you meet someone his age. 
Max? Yeah. and Max like, is 20. Max is 20. You meet him and you're like... Well, it's funny because it's like, he's 20. He looks younger than 20. Yeah. he. It's like you can see the puberty. Yeah. He, well, he just got old. He just got through. He's a late pube guy. So you should be... I'm a late... I'm a late puber You were a late, late, bu- late bloomer? I saw a picture of myself when I was uh, like 28 and I swear I look 16. Well, but you do have a baby face. You got I a, do. How many did he have, Max? You do have like one of those. Ba- and by the way, when we call out to Max, Max is a uh, Max is a young man that's helping on the podcast. Is now. he paraplegic? He's quadriplegic. Quadriplegic. Yeah, we got a couple of quads. Uh, he doesn't know how to hit enter. Just hit enter and it'll probably go to it. Nope. He keeps opening a new tab. Hit enter. George Carlin. Oh, George Carlin. I this mean, that bad. says it that, all. That says everything. That says everything you need to know. <laughs> That's George, incredible. He's, George Carlin. With a K. He spelled it with a K. Well, K. Oh, he wrote George K. 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 Arlen. That's, well, that's his dad's influence. I mean, again. George Carlin. He doesn't know who that is. There's no chance. Why would he know? The first 14. thing. 14. Great. Great. So, so he did 14. Even, again, whatever. So, I my feeling is... uh. This will be my last. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is it. This is it. This I is it. came on your podcast to announce uh, that this will be. Um, you're going to get a lot of hits. Uh, <laughs> this, this kind of news gets generates a lot of momentum online. Yeah. Uh, that it. I don't know how many. I mean, I'll. I don't know five. I don't know how many I can do. But but while anyone has any uh, interest in me whatsoever, I am aware that people have interest in me. Currently, uh, for a variety of reasons, but I also know it's finite, and it's a it's. I've spent fucking two years on it, so yeah, well, more or less year and a half. Well, really, or I could go more, which is I was supposed to start in twenty twenty. Yeah, because of COVID, I was going to say almost yeah. almost everyone that's putting it out now probably had a good chunk of it prepared prior to COVID. Yeah. If not fully done, I I, it was fully pretty done. fully done. Yeah, see that's, so, that's crazy. So three in in some ways three years. Yeah. Um. So. So it's like a big like, put it now. This cool and sad thing about Netflix is that they're, it's incredible to have stuff on there. But in some ways, it's like the last scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Where they they put they put the ark in the <laughs> with all the artifact. It's such a funny shot. Yeah, it's like it's it and it's and it's like fifty stories of shelves. Yeah, of things. just shit. Yeah, I've not. It's like it's um it's America's junk drawer, <laughs> and they just put the fucking <laughs> yeah. ark in it, and yeah. it's so funny. It's, so, it's such so a funny. funny ending. Yeah, it's like I don't even know. I mean, I'm sure it was like kind of funny. I'm sure like Lawrence Kasdan thought it was funny who wrote it and like. Stephen was like, no, this is re-. like everybody else played it real. Well, because they all found like the, the beauty in it. Yeah. But he was like, no, no, no. It's meant to mean it's that garbage. It's everything stupid. Means nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, are you guys not cynical? Oh, you're not cynical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking stupid and it doesn't mean anything. Can you imagine that though when they're going through it and he says that at a dinner they're celebrating? He's like, how funny was that last scene? And like, I hey. had I heard a story about the producer mm, and director of Memento arguing about what the movie was about. When they were doing press, they they couldn't. They connect. didn't. They never talked about it. Like, well, clearly he's lying. Yeah, and like <laughs> yeah. he's not lying. No, this was that was a real. He was he had a fake. He was had him. He had real amnesia. No, he was lying because he murdered his wife. Like, that's wild. Obviously, it's the director. the The fact that the the producer told me, and it's kind of one of these things of like he wrote it, so it's he knows. He knows. <laughs> But also, I think sometimes when you, this is a good question for you because I notice this a lot. You know when somebody makes art mm-hmm. and someone else goes, this is brilliant because it means blah, blah, blah. And the artist themselves is like, I, I had people tell I me I that. said things in blocks that I did not say. That they just said, they were like, that. it was brilliant that you said it that way. And you're like, I didn't. Somebody said. I didn't mean it. I'll tell you afterward who said it because it's pretty funny. Yeah. They go. It's funny how you basically said like, "Are women worth it?" And I was like, <laughs> I, didn't say that. "I never said that. I never what? What?" They're like, "Yeah, you did. What? You said it, and that's what I heard." Yeah, it was like, "Dog." Because the reason is there's a there's an account on TikTok, 
and he's on Instagram, I think, he breaks down rap songs and he'll be like, did you know Lil Yachty made three on I know that. He, that uh, the, he does it. He did it about Kendrick Lamar. Right. He did about, uh, he'll do things so intricately where almost like in, in a conspiracy theory way where you're finding things that aren't quite there or they're just just about there where they're justifiable where you go i don't know if he meant that but i guess I like there's no there yeah like part of being a good or whatever i won't say good but part of being a a lot of reputable artists will do shit that's intentionally vague mm-hmm. so that people will just project there was an article that i read that i cannot find because it's so goddamn interesting where they it was just 20 years ago david beckham's appeal was that he never talked so you could, he was whatever you wanted him to be. Mm-hmm. And then the minute he talked, it was done. That is true, though. But it's also, he was an unfortunate voice. Mm. It was a very high pitch. He was like, it was, it was it like a bit. Body. He was doing a bit. Yeah. It could, <laughs> years later, he finally let his voice He finally admitted like, that he was doing a bit. Look, mate, that's look, not, mate, never look. been my voice. <laughs> He's got this super deep. <laughs> I'll be real with you. That was just a throw off the paparazzis. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, so, but yeah, when people assume meaning. Somebody, I mean, this is the end of blocks will get a lot of like, I somebody, I won't say what happened at the end of blocks, but somebody didn't see what I did mm-hmm. and thought it was something else. Ah, uh, I understand. Thought yeah. like, I know what you were saying. You were hitting the light, hit the microphone, and that was your way of saying, like, this is what I that's what I mean. But yeah. as the artist, you're allowed to take credit for that stuff. That's what's so wild about stuff. Yes. When, when rappers get, um, on that page that we're talking about, yeah. which I wish I, I knew his name, but it's hard to, that'd be hard to like Google whatever that is. But this guy, he breaks down uh, songs, particularly from hip hop Kendrick artists. Lamar, Nostalgia. Yeah, Nostalgia. It, nostalgia, Kendrick Lamar's version, Nostalgia. And he just breaks it down in a way that's like, it means this and this and this and this. And I would love to hear Kendrick refute it because I guarantee you sometimes he'd be like, I don't know. No, I didn't. No, I wasn't doing that. No, but you, and because what would that guy then do? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, well, well, no, but, and it's like, no, I didn't mean that at all. Yeah, but you must, buddy, I didn't mean that (laughs) at at all. all. I don't know what you want from me. Yeah, like, well, yeah, but uh, no. But some guys are purposefully trying to find uh, ways to do that, right? Like, I know Drake is working tirelessly on trying to make layers and layers and layers inside of layers of layers, right? And I'm not saying this because, and I'm being ignorant right now, but I assume Rick Ross isn't doing it as much. Could be wrong. I don't, I think but Rick I don't Ross, know Rick as a, Rick Ross would, is happy with a double entendre. Yeah, yeah, five, and, quadruple and, and, and yeah, yeah, and, uh, and, and Drake and Jay-Z are, I mean, I would, Jay-Z's higher than Drake. In he, terms of entendre minimum. Sure, but he's not making albums anymore. I mean, like right now, Drake is one of the guys that I know, whenever I, I listen to his new album, I know he's trying so fucking hard to insert layer as much stuff. You know when you do a scene with somebody or when you're directing a scene with somebody and they're trying tirelessly to get a fuckload of jokes into a one in a one line conversation? Yeah. And you're like, buddy, give me one of those jokes and make it a banger. Instead yeah. of, it's like, like I can't edit this, and nobody talks that way. Yeah. So sometimes I'll hear Drake. It's like he's stuffing a, a a sleeping bag back into the thing. Where you're like, come on, man, it's so much. You listen to the Twenty One Savage record? I did. I listened to the whole thing on the way here's, home the other here's, night. Here's here's what I like about Twenty One Savage. He's not even twenty one anymore. By for the way, guys, my dad. For guys, uh. In hip hop, you're a long ass insults. You bitch asthma. Da, 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 yeah, just yeah. Want, and then Twenty One Savage has distilled it down to pussy, <laughs> 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 and it's devastating. Yeah, it's complete, and it's devastating. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't think of a better single word insult. You think a you- guy? It's better than bitch. It's better. The, his read on it's it's fucking pussy. perfect. Because the tone of his voice also would help. Like the way he, yeah, the, 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 his tone is, uh, it's a slap already. It's so such a complete dismissal. Put you got it. Put that. Put that. Did you like that new album? Uh, I liked it. All right. Like I couldn't yeah. really. 
There were, uh, yeah, I listened to it. I don't know what I was doing, but I wasn't paying full attention to it. Yeah, I was, and I was nothing stuck in grabbed me. Where I was like, oh shit. There's a couple of songs on there that I thought were fucking amazing. I think his his like, oh look, you see, yeah, he puts up. <laughs> he's thirty years old. Drake's. I I would say the song that uh, the song that I think has the most of what I'm talking about uh, is Middle of the Ocean. I think Middle of the Ocean has like. If you're at home, listen to Middle of the Ocean. I think it's so layered. And so, and I like it. It's, it's not that I don't appreciate that. So I guess as I've gotten older, I pine for the days that you know the hip-hop that I love, that 90s hip-hop, where it's a little bit less heavy-handed with that shit. Where sometimes I just want to hear Rakim say something simple. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was the first, like, entendre guy. Yeah, like, I just want to hear like, something. Like, triple, triple minimum. Give me something easy that's, but that's not trying super hard, but I dig it and I hear exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I also don't like uh, new age hip hop where it's secret. There's so many hidden messages where you have to know what's going on in their personal circle. When they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, when they're yeah, like yeah. eight had the shoes and 64 <laughs> came to ninth. And you're like, I, yeah, what, like this is who algebra. Fuck, yeah. Who is all the, yeah, who, this is social solve algebra. Solve an equation and then yeah. figure out where this is happening. You're like, if you know, you had to be on his IG live right. that night. That's what and it is. And then though. you have to, and you're like, okay, you guys know I work. Yeah. <laughs> I have you guys understand I got on. a job and I can't be up to date on everything it's impossible i just i mean i guess the ute does for sure that's the one thing i do feel that uh, i am getting older because i'm sure when i was 22 i, I was like what how do you because well, you don't have to pay rent y yeah you, they don't have to pay rent so yeah, they just true. can like be L passionate live? about a th like j i'm just like no, no i'm gonna i have to listen to this tell me you i was gonna talk about a conversation that we had when i was at your house but i'm gonna sidebar because i'm more interested in you just did ayahuasca again. When I left I you, you were going the next day. I did. How was it this time? It's a wild scene. <laughs> well, I should mention in the special, I talk about doing DMT. I sort of omit ayahuasca uh, as a thing because I, I, for various reasons, but uh, the DMT I did. Did I talk about it on here? I did DMT. We talked uh, about one ayahuasca year ago. On here, yeah. I I know I talked about ayahuasca. I did DMT uh, almost an exact calendar year ago. Uh, that's five meo DMT. The toad. Yeah. The thing that Mike Tyson's done sixty times apparently. I did one hit once, and I was cool for six days, and then on the seventh day, or I would say I was cool for five days. On day six, I had a reactivation. And I was not myself for five months. Seriously? Yeah. In what regard? I didn't, I was, I, you know, people talk about like getting a 35,000 foot view of life. Mm -hmm. I had a 35 trillion foot view. DMT is so insane. Michael Pollan, the writer said it takes you to a place before the Big Bang, mm. which is where I went. What were you? What? What? What did you look like to yourself? I didn't look. What? What is the self? Like when you look down. I there was no looking down. I I was transported to this thing. This uh, capsule. Uh, whatever. It was before the Big Bang. I knew nothing. Hmm. I didn't know what direction was. I didn't know what breathing was. I didn't know what sight was. I didn't know. Uh. And fucking, I didn't, I, in my mind, I formed the first synapse. Right. I didn't, it was clean, it was like a regression. There's no word for it other than like start over. Yeah. Heart and reset. Heart, yeah. And that was like, and then slowly but surely it comes back. Like at one point, like a God thing shows up and cut, but then, so anyway, so that was like the night I did it. And then Sunday I started having a reactivation. So like I'm on a coffee date and my consciousness is disintegrating. <laughs> a scene. It's I, like, so dude, it was so fucking 
crazy. Do you remember the conversation that was taking place when you started? Normal. Couldn't get the waiter's attention. It turns out it's because I wasn't there. Because my consciousness wasn't there, but you were you were leaving. Did you explain this to the woman you were no, on a date with? No, I didn't fucking say a peep. Because <laughs> what? what am I gonna say? I, excuse I me. I don't even know. Leave. I was like just trying to stay with a person because I right. didn't know what was going on. It sounds terrifying. Like it, dude. It's not terrifying. I would have. I would have paid for terrifying. I was so far past terrifying. Te- I would have. How, yeah. What do you need? Who do I write the check How much? To? How much? I didn't know what anything... I could function. Like, I could have a conversation. But like, your brain was... But, but I was like... Half, imagine like a split screen, but it's like a soft dissolve center. And like, I'm talking to you, and then like, this is like kind of static. Oof, oof. It was so fucking... Ben- to the point where I talked about it on Rogan. I would have killed myself, but I knew I was just going to go into more of it. Right. Oh my so God. So it wasn't depression. No. It was, I was, I told somebody, I was, my mo- my brain, my mind and brain were drowning on disorientation. Like I couldn't breathe. <laughs> like what, I couldn't what did you do think. To, what, what did you, how did you manage it? I just hung out with my friend and just like waited. I tried to watch a Hemingway documentary and at one point. Oof. He got shot during World War One. He explains what it's like, and I'm like, we got to turn this off because you because he said a fucking he got shot and a rib a a uh, ribbon of consciousness flew out of him and then flew back in. I was like, we got to turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't feel that? I can't feel that thing. I know what you mean though. That's like if a so- if I'm too high, if I'm high on psychedelics. And a song has a lyric that says a thing that hits too close to home. That's I imagine what that feels like where you're like, ah, I, don't I couldn't. I don't my know. sense of time was like, you know, when someone says it's crazy that that mountain's 500,000 years old and you go, yeah, man, but nothing happened. It doesn't register. Yeah. I was aware. I like I got it. And it was fucking terrifying. I couldn't watch Apple screensavers because I was like, I can't look at a mountain. Because I know how old that is, how it got here. A million years wasn't that long a time. (laughs) (laughs) Until Santino, I swear to you, until for real two months ago. Kind of like May, June. I was like, okay. I never, I would, when I was falling asleep, I'd like free fall, like. Free fall. Uh, how come you? How come I never knew this? I, how, I only talk about it on podcasts. <laughs> uh, you never said anything like that to me, and and yeah, and we. Sp- it was because I know phone. it was. I kind of thought I must have told you. Well, I thought. Well, you had told me about DMT, but I didn't know it had continued to affect you in the aftermath. I told you I was on a plane. Did I tell you that I was what? on a plane? We hit turbulence. This is like last December, so I'm like. Well, I was getting better, went to the dentist, did laughing gas. They go, take a big hit, because I was like sort of still feeling the, they go, take a big hit. And I go, back to the white zone. And I'm just like, hey, we got to stop real quick. And I basically had to like start over. Mm. I got on a plane a couple days later and turbulence. My first thought wasn't who, what's, my first thought was, what am I? Jesus. Not, I mean, dude, it was real. This is kind of an advertisement to never do DMT. Don't do DMT. Do ayahuasca. (laughs) 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 Tell me, okay, tell me how fun ayahuasca was this time for you. Or what ayahuasca, I had to take a year and a half off because of DMT. But now you're back, baby. Baby. (laughs) You're back. You got Baby, an anklet? I like the anklet. I still, the anklet don't, the anklet never hasn't left. I know, that thing is, that that's, that thing's older than. You don't take it off when you shower? This passed at the comedy store. Is um, it? Yeah, it's passed. Neil's ayahuasca bracelet. <laughs> um, they did the ceremony. It did like eight minutes. Um, yeah, it was great. It was, it was heavy duty. Heavy. I this time, but now you're so accustomed to it. Aren't you kind of like a. Well, no, it, yeah, I am accustomed to it, but it's different experiences every time. Sure. So. This time, I uh, unlocked a new feature, awesome. which was 
palpable spirits. Palpable spirits. Yep. Go on. Eyes closed. In here, we pour whiskey. Whisk. Guys, it is no secret that women love beards, and we love growing them. Or trying to, at least for some of you peeps out there. Not me, I got old thicky red bush on my face. Having a great look of beer requires work. Can't just let it be. Whether it's beard growth oils, uh, styling products, or top-of-the-line trimmer, there is a small army of products required to grow your best beard. And luckily, Beard Club is here to save the day. They are the leader in beard-first men's growth and grooming. They deliver quality hardware and consumables that will help you get a better, thicker, and fuller-looking beard. You want to be like your old boy? You want to be like the Red Rocket over here? Uh, they sent me a bunch of stuff. It's actually amazing. The beard oils I like very, very much. Soothing, helps it uh, keep your skin moisturized so you're not going to break out. Also keeps the hair not so not so coarse. Uh, you don't want to uh, kiss your partner's face and make it look like sandpaper was just being rubbed on their cheek. Uh, they also have a great trimmer. Trimmer is incredible. Um, and all of the essentials that's in the Beer Club package are uh, pretty amazing. But that PT45 trimmer is great. It's uh, changing. There's no hair pulling. And uh, it's got an amazing battery life. I've literally charged it one time, and I've had it for months. The Growth Kit has a bunch of sprays to strengthen and moisturize your beard hair. you got to try it out. No matter what type of beard you have, Beard Club has the perfect kit to fit your needs. All right? Two million beards have been served so far. Grow your best beard today and take 20% off your first order when you go to beardclub.com slash whiskey. Use the code whiskey. That's beardclub.com slash whiskey. Code is whiskey, baby, for 20% off your first order. Hey guys, 52% of men over 40 experience some form of erectile dysfunction over the course of their life. And I got to tell you something. So what? So what? So you're the national average? Yeah? So what happens? You're the majority, my friends. And guess what? There's no shame in that game. You need a little bit of help working the old machine to pump more blood downstairs. And if you're experiencing ED, I got to tell you, there's help. Roman is the digital health clinic for men. We've talked about it before. You know what it is. They offer genuine FDA-approved medication for as little as $4 a dose. That is very cheap. Cheaper than the coffee that you're drinking right now on the way to your job. Uh, at Roman, there's no waiting rooms, no hassle. Just a straightforward, convenient digital experience, which means you can take care of all of it from the comfort of your own home. How nice is that? Getting started is so simple. Grab your laptop or mobile device and start your free online visit today. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. And if medication is appropriate, Roman sends it right to your door for free with two-day shipping. It's going to be there in two days, all right? Everything arrives in discreet packaging, so your neighbor Bob needs to mind his own business and not look what's going on in your personal life. The majority of men are uh, having ED, and uh, it's something that men shouldn't feel weird about or bad about anymore. Try it, take it, revitalize your rocket, baby. Right now, Roman has a special offer for our listeners. Use our link to get 20% off your first order. Right there. It's clickable. You see it. It's down in the description, but it's also right in front of the page. It's uh, ro.co slash whiskey. Uh, just go to ro.co slash whiskey today. That's ro.co slash whiskey for 20% off. Ginger. I like gingers. Palpable spirits. Yep. Go on. Eyes closed. Can Pretty I... heavy med. Pretty Can... heavy medicine. Do I keep my eyes closed? You, for this? you need to keep yours open. I'm going to keep my eyes closed. In order to see it. Okay. Pretty heavy medicine. Got it. But like getting heavier, but not crazy. Not mm -hmm. like I'm losing my mind. Just like, oh, this is pretty like heavy. Like, and, and I felt pretty like anesthesia mm -hmm. or whatever. And uh, Andrew? Yeah. Open up. Okay. Female spirit. Right in front of your face. Yep. Like felt her come toward me. <laughs> Could feel the contours of her face. Felt air pressure change. Uh, I feel like if you'd been videotaping me, you would have seen my hair move. Mm -hmm. And then I had a thing with her. I thought she was ayahuasca. She wasn't. Ayahuasca presents as a woman. This was not her. Uh, and then a few minutes later, male spirit. On the other side of your face. Yeah, who came in with my friend. Who who came in more aggressively, the male or the female? The female, ironically enough. Uh, see, women, yeah. you see? See, you see that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I told somebody a story that I don't... I. Never, I don't, not like it's a big deal, but but somebody on Reddit, and I'm still trying to find the guy. Uh, the question on Reddit was, "What's the craziest thing ayahuasca ever told you?" Mm. And the guy wrote, "She told me to watch Neil Brennan's Netflix special." <laughs> I <laughs> not, I, but the three mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not well, blocks. Maybe the new. Well, ayahuasca. I mean, who? It could have been like way early press for blocks. <laughs> uh, 
I DM the guy. I go, what? I was like, she, and he goes, did it happen to you? It happened to three of us. Mm-mm. And then I had to pretend to be like my own webmaster where I was like, yeah, I read Neil's dating my sister, whatever. And like, so I wasn't like, it's me. Right. <laughs> hey man. And he never got back to me. Why? I don't know. Guy, reach back out to Neil. I know. It's a tough one. Um, what did the, what did the female spirit say to you? She didn't say anything. What did he say? Nothing. Nothing. She, he, I don't know who she was. He, I said to my friend, uh, uh, you brought a guy in. She goes, yeah, it was my brother who had died, who had been attached to her for like the day before, because it was their birthday. Who was the woman then? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, I don't know who the woman was. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Mm. The woman's spirit. Yeah, I don't know. But the male spirit we know. I believe it was her brother. She believes it was, it was definitely a guy. In retrospect, when somebody says something like that to you, do you? I used to want to throw them off a roof. I mean, like when people would talk about, when people talked about any of this, (laughs) I was like, what? I couldn't roll my eyes hard enough. Yeah. And now it's, now it's a way, now I have an anklet. (laughs) So that's how much people, now that's how much people change. That's what I was telling somebody the other day, like. I've seen people really believe one thing and then I've lived long enough to see them really believe another thing, like the opposite. Isn't that nice? If you believe, if you agree with them. I mean, it's nice and not nice. It's, that's funny. If yeah. you agree with them. If I agree with what they're saying. I yeah. think that's kind of the problem of, of what we're going through culturally now is when somebody changes their opinion about something, if you believe in it or, or side with what they've changed to, you think it's the greatest. It's but a, if it's the opposite, you're like, B- burn that person. Yeah, it's just damn social media. See, that's real, that's see, that's what I find so fucked up. Like, it's like this, you know, this bullshit, uh, uh, this, well, not bullshit, whatever, the race that's going on out here between, you know, Caruso and uh, the, the well, I can't even think of her name. Mm-hmm. But whatever. Karen Bass. But they were like, oh, she flipped, or he flipped. He was a Republican, now he's a Democrat. And what's so funny about all this is like, all these people flip constantly on everything. Not the people the saying they flipped. Yeah, it's just like that's that. Of course, that that's all that they're doing all the time. They're just giving you what they think you're gonna like, so that you'll put up with their bullshit. Well, we've seen a dozen comedians <laughs> rebrand themselves. Well, that's what I mean. But I think I think most people are doing that their whole lives. Yeah, I think that you do. I mean, it's yeah. There's like the the Churchill quote about like if you're young and a. If you're young, if you're if young you're young and, a, and you're and a Republican, Republican you you're got heartless. No heart. Yeah. And if you're older and you're a Democrat, you're brainless or whatever yeah. that bullshit was. Some bullshit fucking jerk off. Churchill, yeah. typical Churchill. Yeah, Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, but but I guess what the core of that is, right? Though, is like if I see people that aren't changing, right? Like somebody said something to me today online, uh, and I responded with like, "Never change, man." Like the greatest yearbook quote of all time: "Never change, bro." Yeah. It's the scariest version of a person is when they never change. So ironically, all you want to do is have people continue to change because when you go back and see somebody that you haven't seen in years and they haven't changed anything, right? that's the scariest version of a person. I'm not saying I, your it, job has to be better, your car is faster, your house is bigger. Your, I'm just saying if you haven't shaped yourself a little bit differently from them when I knew you years ago, it's a little concerning. Well, they're just like an old aquarium. That hasn't been, you know what I mean? Like a milky <laughs> aquarium. It has never been cleaned. Just like, ooh. You're like, you don't look, want to do anything? It's okay. And the, there's fish, the fish are alive. Barely. Like not, they're not thriving. No, they keep bumping into the glass. Yeah, like they just, yeah. So. Is that one trying to kill itself? You see it like putting its head in one of those caves, those and, rock yeah, caves like trying to break trying its own neck. Yeah, like trying to close the treasure chest on its head. <laughs> 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 That's such a good it. image. Another his fish buddy is just like pushing yeah, like it with his nose, to, but he doesn't snatch. have the strength to push the fucking top of the chest. It is true though. I think I think the scariest version of anybody is when you see zero change at all. Yeah. So, so there is something good about making those big shifts into the thing that you roll your eyes about. Right now, on the flip side, is there is something very embarrassing about somebody who makes a big change. Yeah. Like somebody you went to high school with, and they're like, I don't know if you heard. But I'm this now. And you're like, oh, oh okay. Shit. Yeah. And you want to change. I'm of the mind <laughs> that you should try to continue to, like, grow. Yeah. Or, or I don't even think, gro- I think gro- the way people define growth is different, but. I know what you mean. Uh, expand. 
How about that? Yeah. What do you feel about relationships in that regard? Uh, fi- uh, r- like marriage, for instance. Like if you were hypothetically married. <laughs> I am. I am hypothetically married. I feel like if it's... Uh, what's tough is there is this fake idea that you're going to... You know, this for t- till death do us part, that you're going to like someone the same way for the rest of your life. I think the challenge of marriage that's perhaps... Or l- any long-term relationship, the challenge that's kind of inviting and also healthy is to to see your partner change and you change and try to see if you connect in new ways as time goes on if these two changes of people are still that's uh, getting along really difficult that's and that's someone from someone who's never been married i can only imagine no it is but i think that's part of the beauty of the whole thing is kind of like and by the way i don't think there's any shame in at some point two adults being like we no longer connect Right. But ironically, we throw this disgusting, like, we're so happy that you get married, and then we want to kill people that get divorced, mm-hmm. as if they're like repulsive creatures. Like Somebody this, said when they want, started telling their friends they were going to get divorced, they said it was like a zombie movie, where people are like, you don't mean that. <laughs> you don't, I mean, they they thought they would catch it. It didn't get you. Like, you didn't, yeah, you don't. Let me see you don't. No, you don't get You don't get it. It is true, It's a, just, but the amount of elation that we get so socially from someone's w- getting married, which, by the way, is so odd because it has nothing to do with you. It also, they didn't, I've been doing a joke about getting, they want a gift now. It's like, well, do something. Yeah. They don't give the medals out at the beginning of the Olympics. You got to (laughs) fucking run. Run the race. Let's see how you do. Yeah. That's why I get them a gift. I put it in escrow. And if they make it five years, they get a toaster oven. If they make it 10, they get a real good gift. If they make it 10. You make it 20? You're getting a good Neil (laughs) Brennan gift, You fucking. Look, we can, after five years, I go, I can give you the toaster oven. If you think you're making another five... (laughs) This is going to be a small car. <laughs> that, is, that, that is great. It levels as it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do think that is the beauty of the challenge. To me, in relationships that are a nightmare, sometimes, like anything, the challenge is, ah, instead of just throwing it away, can I, what can I find that's great about this that I liked from before that's helped me change together? And 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 I think if it keeps working, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. There, I, I don't like this idea like i just had a friend is going through a divorce right now and uh, the amount of shame that they feel is weird and you're like who i don't think they would feel half the shame if they didn't make such a fucking stink about the whole thing well that is true if you didn't yeah that is true but who but the stink has the stink is on everything everybody makes it a thing yeah so uh, until that's not a reality which is we're hundreds of years away from that it's other than kids it's the same basic thing of like ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's an ooh. elevated. Ooh. It's like elevated cooties. Like yeah. ooh, ooh, sitting in a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same dynamic. That's is. all. Is like so you guys are. Fucking, <laughs> was she fucking? Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's yeah. loving it. Yeah, yeah, yeah That's yeah. exactly it's, what it is. It's just a. It's a grown up version. Other than kids, who gives a fuck? Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck about you and your. I don't give a fuck yeah. about you and your wife. Why would you? Right. I don't know. Because yeah. I'm supposed to, because you had a, if, because you had a wedding and you fucking sent out invites and all that shit. Yeah. It's like you're applauding someone's effort in life. Like, hey man, you're fucking, you made more, bu- you made more busy work for yourself. What? I, there are so few achievements that are actual achievements. What are Meaning <laughs> marriage, not an achievement. No, it's not an achievement. No. My, I think my niece or nephew graduated from eighth grade and I wrote him a card like, this is an amazing thing. Actually, what am I talking about? Mil- you'd have to be incredibly stupid not to graduate eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> like eighth grade, it's like nothing happened. Call me when you go to Harvard. Yeah, nothing happened. Even still, call me when you're at the top of your class at Harvard. I- I'm going to give all of Harvard. All of it? Yeah. I don't do, I won't. That's it. I do. Too, well, too many do you know how many Harvard, Harvard people do you know? How many do I know personally? Yeah. Four to four or five, maybe. I yeah, feel like you meet more in this business than you should, by the way. What the, if they were really smart, they wouldn't be in show business. Yeah. Or they, yeah. if they, I mean, they're all pretty intelligent. I mean, they're they all are. You know, some are like have no soft skills whatsoever, but Zero. they all have like good, demonstrably good brains. Yeah, demonstrably but I don't think any of them are funnier. Like none of them are like, oh, he's funny. Like none of them are. That's still that's not you. That's unlearnable. No, but they're... I but I would. I know a guy who got into Harvard early admission. And told me, and I never worked hard at school again, because he knew 
I got into Harvard. It's over. I don't need to, no one's going to ask where I graduated in Harvard. I right. just have to not fail. It's amazing. And then he, and then now he writes for TV. <laughs> And makes five hundred grand or whatever that whatever guys whatever make they make yeah. yeah and yeah. has for twenty years. So that's good. Good for that. Good yeah, for good for him. But he time. gamed it. Yeah, he worked really hard and then and then like knew what it was and was like, okay, that's well. what that's what we can do in our business. By the way, you can work extremely hard, achieve a thing, and if you're smart enough, you don't ever have to work ever again. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what did Neil say to me on the walk back from the restaurant the other night? I said to you. I, I asked you some kind of question about something, about creating. I was like, what do, you, what, do, what do you want to create next? And you said, buddy, I don't ever want to work again if I don't have to. <laughs> and I was like, you don't mean that. And you were like, no, no, no. I just want to do stand-up, which I think what you meant was it's not work. You're like, stand-up is... I really like... The word work is probably not attached to stand-up for you. It's more stand-up is, uh, I don't know, per artistic creative process. Less so than when somebody goes... Well, it is your job. You're like, yeah, but it's not work. Because you were like, eh, that's I will do that forever. I don't yeah. want to do work, work stuff. I don't want to have meetings. That's work. Yeah. That's what, like, even the making blocks. You have meetings. Now streaming. Yeah. The, the people part of it, I find nearly unbearable. I don't know. I, like, can't. I'd somehow, not like I've gotten worse at it, but but I'm like, so used to not doing it yeah. that when I now have to do it, I'm like, I can't believe the amount of people and personalities and energy and their, I hurt their feelings and they hurt my, like just constant, the, the winds of socializing with people and then they're mad and they're going to shit talk. Just all this stuff that if you, nice studio. What is it? Uh, some kind of bug. Oh, we always uh, have, we always have one bug for good luck. Oh, that's cool. In here. We pour whiskey, whiskey. Ladies and gents, people of all kinds, Squarespace is the place to sell yourself a product, an idea, promote something, publish. I've used Squarespace for years, and I've told you guys on this show so many times about Squarespace. If you're designing something on the internet and you want to sell or showcase a product, Squarespace is incredible. That's how I did it for years and years and years. It's the only way I knew how to build a site because they have these beautiful templates that easily lay it out for you. And I got to tell you, I don't like going at these kind of things alone because I'm not so smart. Uh, but they have so many new features on Squarespace to build a site that are so powerful and incredible. Um, they have member areas that make it easier for creators to monetize your content uh, in a way that fits your brand. They got appointment scheduling so you can link up your calendars, classes, sessions, whatever you're doing, teaching yoga. Uh, you're a jiu-jitsu instructor. Uh, you can easily see the calendar, reschedule, and do everything very simply in one place. They got a video studio so you can create pro-level videos effortlessly, uh, and it help, helps you share engaging videos to tell your story, uh, show off your product, or uh, just uh, make a video of you with a yo-yo or a fidget spinner, and someone will watch. They got email campaigns. They connect all your social media accounts to one place. And the analytics is probably the thing that we use the most here at the show. You can use insights to grow your business, learn where your site visits are, are coming from, and your sales to analyze which channels are most effective. Where are them clicks coming from on the globe? Improve your website to build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products or content. For us, it's great. That's how we know where to go on tour like Boston. Come see me in Boston for New Year's Eve. Uh, if you're looking to build a site and you really want uh, to do it, beautifully and seamlessly without a lot of hassle you got to try squarespace go over to squarespace.com slash whiskey squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial when you're ready to launch use the offer code whiskey to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain hey did you know over the holidays property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike nationally bummer but it's true that's why our friends at simply safe home security are offering 50 percent off their award-winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure during this holiday season Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. And here's why I love it. I put a bunch of cameras up all over the house. I have sensors on the windows and the doors, internal sensors as well, the motion. Uh, they sent me a big box, Simply Safe did, and thank you so much. And they got 24 7 professional monitoring agents. They use Fast Protect TM technology exclusively for Simply Safe. So at all times, uh, if anything happens, boom, you get a call. Uh, we had a kitty cat. We had a little kitty cat. Uh, Causing some ruckus in the backyard. I saw it on the camera, and uh, I was watching. I was watching the cat poop on my patio. Uh, but it's more for just that. Uh, for intruders, home invaders, also people just coming to your front door, you want to check out what's going on out there. 
Uh, they got the top rated app uh, and you can stay in complete control of your system anywhere, anytime. And your safety is priority to them, which I think is huge. They have wonderful monitoring uh, 24-7. So, you know, you can feel safe with one of their support staff. And I really think it's great. If you don't have a home security system, you definitely should get one. It's peace of mind at the very least that you and your family stay safe at night from some goofball causing some ruckus and some harm to you and your loved ones. Don't miss your chance to, for massive savings on my favorite security system. Get 50% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash whiskey today. Simplysafe.com slash whiskey is their bis- biggest discount of the year. This ain't going to get any bigger than this. At simplysafe.com slash whiskey, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Ginger. I like gingers. Nice studio. What is it? Uh, some kind of bug. Oh, we always, uh, have, we always have one bug for good luck. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so the... Uh, so yeah, so I just find that very difficult, and I find the stand-up part great because it's not because it's like I just it's like I go here, I say the stuff, <laughs> it works or doesn't. I accrue an hour of it, and then I travel and do it there. That's the travel is physically hard. That's the work, and we're wearying. Yeah, but the sh- the show part of it is like surfing a wave that you make. Uh, you know what I mean? That's pretty goddamn good. Yeah. I would say it's like stand up to me is just is sitting in the middle of the ocean trying to catch a wave. And then when you are catching a wave, you're like, oh, it's amazing. And then just like that, you fall off and you're like, oh my God, I have to fucking do that all over again. Yeah. I have to paddle. That, that, like, I'm paddling. That, that, that's you. That's me flying to, you know what I mean? Yeah. To Omaha is or me writing. paddling out. Yeah. That's all it is. Just paddling, 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 sitting and waiting because you're waiting, you know, with a good joke and then catching a little wave of a great show. It, it's that that much time. People that surf know it's a little it's a little payoff, and then you have to do it again, then do it again, then do it again. But yeah. that's at least not work because it. Same thing with surfing. Those guys will do that every fucking day, because all of that strength. It's different between, every time. It's different, right? Something feels something a little bit feels. That's why I like golf. I know a lot of my friends are like, oh, I don't fucking like that shit. Why do you like it so much? It feels different every time. People are like, yeah. oh, how could you play the same course? I could, I could play the same course every day, hypothetically forever. And people be like, it's the same fucking, you're doing the same. It's different every single time. It's yeah, just it's different like, every it's time. just like stand up. I used to play the same course every day. Like I, when I caddied. It feels good. Yeah. It's, what do I, I it was kind of like, what do I need a different, it's, this is still 550 yards. Right. What's it's still it's hard. hard. Yeah. It's still hard. It doesn't matter. I, but th- I think that's, that's what you meant when you were talking about that, which I, th- I got when you were like, I just. The work thing has to go by the wayside. But you've also been doing this thing for so long. Yeah. So you it hits you differently. Which part? The work thing or the stand-up thing? The work thing. It's just it for you, it's ex- it's you're done. Like you already did. It, it. I like I I the thing the Chappelle show was very meaningful to me. You did that show? Yeah, I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> but I do occasionally. Yeah. It just that was that that meant something to me. Yeah. Like it meant like a my friend who was like kind of being weirdly ignored by showbiz and comedy i was like this is like wrong yeah like it's wrong and i felt responsible because he asked me to write half big with him and it didn't do good and all that stuff so i felt like i he helped me he like asked me to, and then i kind of fucked up so i was like all right well i'm not gonna i'm gonna be like it will not. He can't. He won't fail. Yeah, it you won't, won't fail. Let it fail. Like it. It. It'll be for lack of ability. It won't for be for lack of effort or for lack of uh, uh, focus. Right. Um. But. So that. So once you do something like that, that's super like beyond personal. It's like a fucking blood. It's like a. It's like a familial blood debt or i don't know i don't watch game of thrones <laughs> i'm sure they have a better term for it uh blood oath I don't, something I don't watch it. I um it. uh something yeah. so it's like this thing it's a pact yeah so, yeah so that i don't even we didn't even make do you know what i mean like it's that was it was like between me and i just wanted it like had to do it so then everything so then i do stuff that's not personal and then I'm like, eh. It's meaningless. Yeah, it's not, it's kind of meaningless. It's just like, it's like sex for sport or something. Ooh, Do you know what I mean? That is so dark. Have you done sex for sport? It's I, pretty I, great. I, I've never got, I haven't gotten an invite. 
I would, but, we'd love to have you are, out you, to the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not for sport, but just like in uh, not like for sport, but just like fucking girl. You know what I mean? I like what just I mean. some no. girl or well, some a, guy a, or whatever. It's, it's sex to pass the time or whatever. It's yeah, like a thing to do. Right. But but I think um, I think what's powerful about that, not to keep bringing it back to it, but it's also bec- because of that. Even as labor intensive as blocks is, or any of your specials to create, the 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 work is the payoff in that regard, right? Making it is the payoff because you yeah. really get to when it comes out in what an hour right yeah, now, now, literally yeah. right now. When it comes out, that's not that whatever that aftermath is isn't going to do what this did, what that did for you at all. It's not going to feel like the creation and the manipulation and putting it together. The 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 work is the payoff, kind of in that. I don't. Yeah, when I think about the Chappelle show, I don't. I think I don't think about the response that much. No, I just think about the connection and the the thing work. Yeah, like the doing it and the driving and the fucking. Hey, what about this? And oh, yeah, it's good. whatever. And same with this. I don't. Hopefully, it'll be people will carry me out of the out of the theater on their shoulders. And they are right, aren't they? Doing that. I think as we you speak go? right now. Um, <laughs> Uh, hopefully America will, for he's a jolly good fellow, mate. <laughs> once they've seen <laughs> huzzah, well, yeah. Once they've seen blocks, I'll get a for he's a jolly good fellow. And and people um, should know there is only one microphone in this because I have seen. And it. it's tiny. It's a tiny, tiny microphone. It's a lot. You went from three to one, to one ti- a tiny, tiny one. Mic. Like you can barely see it. Overcompensating. I had a very funny idea that huh. you would enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, on on. Uh, there are people at, at the end of these specials. They everyone gets credit. Yeah, the credit roll. Right, uh, and it should be a thing where, as the creator of the show, I should be able to say, "I'll give you credit, but I'm going to give you a grade." <laughs> like next on to the credit. Or, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you true. can take credit, yeah. but it's your roll in the dice. Because if I don't think you did a great job, <laughs> you're gonna. <laughs> It's, it's like it's like second cam at uh, cam B, Mike Gunterson C minus C minus. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> get him next time. Better next time. By the way, that would be so funny. Get credit gradings. I mean, that's so it's so, so fucking funny. rude and funny. Yeah, it but it's be... so real because there are people that when... there are people that get credit that you're like you didn't do sh- Shit. you were yeah. bad, uh, buddy. I'm thinking it's like rolling you through were my head on stuff. Bad. Well, there's also as you know, I'm you know working in television. Like I'm on a show. I'm on a show with fucking 95 executive producers and you look at the EP list and you're like, what, what grade would you give Kevin Hart on, on day? A plus. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Chase, make more of what's yours. <laughs> it is funny though. It's like, it should say next to it, like non-applicable. You're mm-hmm. like, this is not a, you didn't, you're not. Failed. Failed. <laughs> <laughs> Total failure. Or you can just not ask for credit and we can keep the credit super short. All right. That's the ultimate. 10 seconds. You, or, it's you roll the dice or you get an actual credit roll or if you're somebody who probably failed we give like a lightning flash yeah, yeah, your yeah, name. yeah. They'd, have to, they'd have to yeah. screenshot it to yeah. be able to see and it. even that it's like fading yeah if you <laughs> it's screenshot already blurred. it yeah it is it is interesting to sometimes see a credit roll because i'm editing the special now and i see the credits and you know there's a lot of people that you're like I don't even C minus did i even meet those people i don't even know if you I probably didn't, meet, I didn't meet fucking, two-thirds of the people yeah, any of the people in the thing but you know, did you yeah. do a special thanks? I had a jumbo, a special big special thanks. thanks. Yeah. Is there anyone you've ever talked to? Like, have you ever put someone on a special thanks that doesn't belong there, but it's fun for you? Have you ever? Done no, that? I've clearly I thought about doing it. Clearly, we used to do that on Chappelle Show where we'd give yeah credit in where we did a credit roll and we. Like we credited the woman who passed on us at HBO. Yeah, <laughs> you used her name. Yeah, uh, we changed it a little bit, but someone was like, "Oh, um, that's so funny." I mean, it's so fucking petty. And um, uh, no, I've thought about it. Like I might, t- I might. There's a text stream of some friends of mine, and and it has a name. I'm not gonna say with it. I'll tell you later. But I was gonna thank the text stream, and it's they'll never see it. I'm sure. But it's like it's so specific to the thing that I was like, Maybe why not? Than it. I don't know. Do it. Well, yeah. Now that I'm saying, as long it, as it's like not to. illegal or no, not, no, 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 not, it's not. It's traceable not. or fuck, fucked up. No, it's like it's like friends that have nothing to do with the bit. They probably won't even see it. That's the thing. 
The yeah. joke will be they'll never watch it. No, it's also the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just, stuffed it's in just the nuts. going in a fucking nothing. And, and it's Netflix, so it goes to the corner. Yeah. Oh, right. People don't even watch I like right. screenshotted it and sent it to people. Like Seth and people like that don't need to like, like Berbiglia doesn't, isn't going to be like, I wonder if he, but so those people I didn't screenshot it because like, who cares? Like yeah. they get special things, but, but like friends I'd send it to. Yeah, I get that. Like screenshotted it. Like, Hey, hey thank you're, you. You're here. Like my friend who helped me get through my pre-psychotic episode, mm -hmm. she got a special thing. She got a little thanks? Yeah. What did you grade her? Well, I didn't grade her. She A plus. If she was graded, she'd be an A+. Plus. Yeah, but she got special thanks, but she's in the special thanks round. What's the difference in someone that gets a credit on your thing that would get an A to a, a B? Help, Helping. Helping. <laughs> and just being and good. It's just helping, that's all just, it is. Are you, contri are you actually helping me? <laughs> in any way. In any way? Guy or who brought me coffee. A. Yeah. A. Yes, you helped. Yeah, you did a thing. And so a lot of people do help in a way that's helpful. Sure. But some people are like helpful and pains in the ass and how, uh, <laughs> there's all kinds of <laughs> uh, grades to, to. Well, everybody needs to watch Blocks. And you give it, you give, not Neil, when you watch the special, you give the grades that you think deserve uh, as far as. Coloring, editing, sound. Yeah, you let me know, America. You let Neil know <laughs> what you grade all of the cast and crew. You, you know what else about credits? This is so boring. But, yeah, it is. Yeah, we're getting uh, there. You can... I put Derek, the director of the show, yeah. first. He was supposed to go third, and I was like, not third. It's supposed to be written by Neil... Written by you, yeah. written to, uh, performed by you, and I was like, they've just watched me for an hour. They know who I am by now. Yeah, I think I want to put in written, performed, ba da 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 by. Like, I'll do all of it at once into one card. Right. Are you going to, now Now I've laid the gauntlet down. If you do it first, you're you're a small man. Well, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Actually, you know what I'm going to What do you think your personality is on this show? On, like, what do people Whiskey think Ginger? of you? Yeah. I think it's I think it's vague. <laughs> <laughs> like on Bad Friends, you're like a vil you're like a goofball villain. Got it. I think what it is. This is the most real me. Specifically, when I'm with friends, right? Like this is the most real me that I am. That you know me. Outside these are of the this. only relationships I understand, by the way, anymore. Is uh, these podcasts. Yeah, podcasts. yeah. Well, but we and you know each other outside of this. But this is our same our same conversation yeah. banter is extremely similar. Yeah. So when they see this, it's like. This is this is about as real as it gets. But when it's with a guest I don't know, right? Then I have to transform. You have to chameleon a little bit. Inherently, I have to change shape to kind of like it's almost like an abusive uh it's an abusive child who's like yeah. dad comes home and I'm like, how can I make sure that he doesn't get upset? Because I don't know what mood he's gonna be in. That's what I'm like with guests I don't know. Because I can't Lay well, you also out. don't want to make it hard on You want to like, if you're more, it's just lubricant to be, to be like, yeah, I'm more like you than I, like than I'm, I'm a, like me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you kind of, I don't have to, you don't have to Jimmy Fallon it and that's not me taking a shot, but it's like, you don't have to be a TV. I'm doing the show next. Uh, you know what I mean? But he does a, he's a TV network host. He yeah. has to, he has to enthrall that thing. It, that's part of the thing. Yeah. This, I can be a little bit, you know. I can be still more of myself. But yeah, you want to be affable to the per person that fucking doesn't know you. What's hard that people don't know at home, which I find interesting that you talk about that, is like, they they don't know how wild that is for me to meet someone for the first time. I've never met this person. Like, I'm going to do uh, 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 Fluffy, Gabriel yeah. Iglesias. We've never met each other. Yeah. We're just peers in this world that we both live in. Yeah. So then I have to figure out a way to connect, to entice to, and to blend our comedy worlds and see if we can make something out of that. Mm -hmm. I think people at home have no idea how wildly weird that is. That's like going to someone in your fucking office. Go to a guy that works in a that works in your same company but in a different department, right? With you know, I would argue that there's one person in a lot of offices that can do it. Yeah, one. Like a person and they that's should like quit their job and start. You doing gotta this. come out. You gotta here. come out, man. Please. Are you still, did you get in the car already? The streets are paved. <laughs> did you <gold? laughs> switch over to YouTube on your phone from your computer? Yeah. Now you put it on the dash. Um, yeah, like, yeah, there's someone that can deep, do that. Beep, 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 Hollywood. But also it's, 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 it's not, it's very difficult to continue to, 
it's harder than people think. It's way harder than people think to still remain portions of yourself and then also try to share something with someone you've ne literally never met before until they say I'm more share. curious than people would think. Like I can I can talk to I could talk to most people. I was at Thanksgiving last year and a woman at the table owned a subway restaurant owned a chain of subways and i was like huge let's go yeah just fucking Tell peppering her with questions not like that everyone's that interesting or that weirdly exotic but and she was like neil was so i was like lady you fucking own a subway it's so it's super interesting it's incredibly interesting to me yeah the like the most successful franchise in the world i think or the most the most locations uh, Look at how Max. Which probably, yeah. Which, which I think at one point it was locations. I think it is Subway for some and reason because it used to be it was like KFC at one point. Yeah, and the best spokesman, Jared. Yeah. What? 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 what, what? Now, by the way, how, talk about uh, over oh, McDonald's still, huh? No. no, no. McDonald's is thirty-eight. Oh, they have seven hundred. Shouldn't they? Shouldn't Subway open? Just more? a few more. So McDonald's still is first again, then Subway. I mean, it's close though. It's, it's literally so like close. a thousand. Yeah, we're right there. Come on, Good guys. For we Starbucks. Can do it. Should you and I open up a subway together? I think we should. It's funny that after they got rid of Jared, they overcompensated. Now every celebrity on earth is a subway spokesperson. Well, that one where they all I now people say it's not good CG with Steph Curry, Serena, Tom Brady. Yeah. And Barkley. Yeah. Somehow Barkley also. And is, is Peyton Manning in? I'm like, I feel like he should be if he's not. Yeah, I think he was throw, in there. Let's throw him in there. Yeah, yeah. Or Mahomes. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but I thought it was not bad, CJ. It was okay. It wasn't bad. It yeah. was not. The, uh, the funny thing about these restaurants is they don't look good. So anyone that is in the restaurant looks like they're on their computer generators. Right, because it's... Because it's, it's, it's so... They're so weird looking to begin with. Yeah. They're so generic you couldn't light them well. Right. You cannot make it look cool or interesting. Because it's designed to make you leave. Is it? I you, think it's designed to... You know, no. There was this old thing I, I, was, I was watching about, like the marketing, the greatest food. It was on the History Channel or something. It was like the greatest tricks in marketing and food or whatever. And it was about how McDonald's uses... Red and yellow, because these are like the most attractive colors to the brain that entices hunger. Yeah. Right? And then they also had extremely well lit, very brightly, lots of windows in their locations to make it feel inviting from the outside, but also kind of like a, uh, okay. a fish in a cage or a, a, a fish in a bowl where it's like, I, I want to get out of here. I don't want people to see me inside of this. Thing. Like, I should leave. Like, they want to make it where it's get, come get the stuff and then get out as fast as you possibly can. Like, yeah, they don't want people to sit and eat. They don't want what Starbucks has turned into, which is an, set it all a, up. An office, yeah. A, set it up. A mobile bring it office. in. <laughs> bring your fucking your fucking your. Bring your iMac. Bring your iMac in. Bring. I saw a guy bring a Bowflex in. Set it up in the corner. <laughs> just just doing crunches. Just doing fucking caramel frappuccino. One second. Do you follow any exercise people on Instagram? I had to delete all that stuff. It was it was agonizing. I used to follow accounts that like I still follow a bunch of stuff that I it's like a waste of my brain. But I would follow exercise people or fitness people or health, uh, and I just was like, if I see this person again, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. I can't. I've been off Instagram for like a month because I went to Hawaii and I was obsessing about comments on a video I posted. And I was like, buddy, you're in a tropical <laughs> paradise, yeah, yeah, and you are thinking about people's comments on a app yeah and scanning it and i had i put it back on i had to put it back on i put it back on today because i have to fucking post all this shit well that's for the, for the that's yeah. for the sake of the thing but i can't wait to take it off because i i was waking up you don't even you just are just you just go you don't yeah. even i was it was first thing i was looking at was social media it's tough yeah it was it's insane the only thing I think that you could you should have on your mobile phone with you on the go should be just texts and calls. The healthiest version would just be text. Oh calls. yeah, yeah, for sure. I yeah. have the uh, thing called the light phone, which does that, but I haven't bring myself. But you're not going to carry it around, are you? Just the light phone. Yeah. 
Well, I'd have to leave this at home. You know, it's got yeah, it's my email. Some of it's at my work. The, I mean, I look. My I, work is on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I like you turn into Trump when you're going. It, yeah. it, my, my work is on the phone. <laughs> um, He's going to run again. You're excited, I know. Ah, oh, can't so, wait. You, you can't wait. Can't wait. Are you going to be doing going door to door? New comedy Anthony about Trump? it. <laughs> a lot of he's like Jason. He's like yeah, voting right. for me. Everyone has to dress up like him. Everyone will dress up like him that has to go door to door. You imagine he's like that's very. You funny. can campaign for me, but you must dress you, like me. People would happily do it. I know that's that would be great. It's almost like the Eminem uh, the Eminem video where they all the all those kids dyed their hair and looked exactly like yeah. him. Yeah, have you heard the there's a stat in election years whoever sells the most Halloween masks Win. is the, wins every time. I believe that. So much. I believe insane. since 1976. No way. Look, he's going to look, look that up, up, Max. The most Halloween mask sold indicates Halloween mask election. Just type that in, and they indicate that indicates how many who, who's going to win president. That's that's. I mean, yeah. but I, that does that does have some bearing. I do get that. Well, it's that's the thing of it is Elect, Look at that election prognostics and the time that that article down it's the there. The first one. Yeah. Is oh. there anything more frustrating than watching somebody else search? The first one. Just click that one. No, yeah. Election indicators. Imitation series form of flattery, especially when it comes to Halloween masks. The sale of presidential candidates' Halloween masks has it directly corresponded to the electoral outcome since Ronald Reagan's rubber likeness outsold Jimmy Carter's in 1988. That's that is... not 88 because it was, it, was, uh, it was 80. Uh, Carter well, and Reagan was 80. Time magazine, you know what I mean? Yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to fight Yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, fake news. But either, uh, yeah. but either way, also people Well, it's because they're not guys. electing. We're electing like a dad movie star. We're not electing, uh, uh, like we don't want the guy to make the laws. We we're, we're electing like a compelling dad movie yeah. star. Yeah. So, so someone in your family, kind of. But the your dad. Yeah. It's yeah. the best member of your family. Right, 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 right. Like Pete Buttigieg is super smart and all this, but he's never going to be president because it's like Beto O'Rourke. Yeah, he's smart, but he's never. He's just not compelling. They don't have the one, the thing. They don't like. They don't got it. They, they don't, don't got the, the juice. They, they don't have the juice. Yeah. Baby, baby, you don't got the juice. Yeah, you don't got it. Well, who's the best version of a president? You know, we've talked about it. You told me at dinner. In the world, what's the best version of a president? You told me this. I don't. What's is? Did I tell you a person? No, it's not a person. Uh, are you asking what the definition of charisma is? No. The person who at dinner you said you know what should be president? Oh, robot president. Robot president. And but was, robot president. It's a. It's, I've been. It's, it's an infallible it's, argument. It's all right. Here's the here's the premise. You <laughs> pour all the information in world history, historic information and psychological information, and uh, and you put it into a bot. Yeah. Or an AI or whatever. Analyze and it. then you ask, and then you, and it makes the decisions as they come up. It's brilliant. Yeah. And it just spits it out. It, I would, we should go carbon credits, <laughs> carbon sequestration, and nuclear power is the way forward for. But I do imagine it will then. Well, it's going to get. I mean, the problem is that we talked about dinner, which is if you. If at one point he says, like, we have to exterminate the Puerto Ricans, <laughs> we got to do it. Because <laughs> that's the bot said it. And he wouldn't, he or she wouldn't, it yeah. would be a he, because come on. Yeah. Um, even, a even, a, even, a, even a robot woman's not going to be present. Time for another genocide. <laughs> 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 yeah. West Indians. <laughs> you're like, oh, fuck. Shit. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Yeah. This um, is what Robot P said. Robot, ro uh, Presbot. Presbot. Uh, Presbot. Presbot. That's right. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Presbot. And he would, and he would have to host the Oscars, yep. the Emmys. He would get so tired. He doesn't get tired. No, we'd overwork the robot. That's what yeah, we'd yeah, do. Yeah. We'd abuse it to the point where it breaks down. And at some point, someone's in a room. Well, we'd have to make m more than one of them. Yeah, that's it. That's, <laughs> someone's in a room with bot press. And he's like, you got to be out there in five. And he's like, I just don't know if I can do I it. I don't he's... got the juice. <laughs> <laughs> My heart's not in it anymore. R press bot, you don't have a heart. The fuck I don't. That's exactly what I do. That's I, I what knew you, you would say. say. That. Yeah, yeah. And he like that. That's how he goes up. They like <laughs> nag him into doing it, into not believing him. Presbot, just get up there Presbot. and do your fucking job. Good evening. Ba 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 da da ba. Um, <laughs> he has the computerized. Uh, it really. If you're talking, like, why have people? 
I, it, I, you're right. At this stage in our technological advancements, why? They, they shouldn't. It's like they shouldn't have statues of people because no one's. If you want to talk about grades, no one's getting more than a B. In the history of people, yeah, yeah, you're a person. You're fucking. You've got gli- you just flawed. glitched up. Yeah, you're Ooh. not uh, uh, Martin Luther King. Fucking fucking on the side chicks. Yeah, Gandhi. Fucking bad side racist. Chicks. We go through everyone. Like, yeah, yeah, fucking side fucking chicks. Fucking other side chicks. Side chicks. <laughs> uh, yeah, like that. We know. We know he was. Re- he was publicly racist. So Gandhi, like, no, yeah. you're not. I mean, it depends. Now you get into like, does it matter if you have side chicks? Does it matter if you're publicly racist? Does it matter? Like, if there's and no. And the answer is always no. I mean, of course not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, but yeah. So, so why we should have, we should worship ideals, not people. But the problem is, if it's not in a person, we can't. Well, you can't it doesn't. Cause... Right. There's nothing to latch onto. There's nothing to relate to in. In uh, how do you materialize? Because you have to materialize an idea. You can't. You can't put a plaque of a word in the street. Well, no. Like Lady Justice is blind. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, right, right. Are we doing our pilot, uh, Lady Justice, about the blind? Yeah. Uh, what you want to give it DA? away right now? If NBC's blind listening. Blind DA? Blind DA, yeah. Uh, I'm the blind DA. It's the Super Bowl shovel. Lady Boy Justice is actually, the, that's the Thailand version. Lady Boy Justice. I'm going to Thailand you for gonna, Christmas. You going to get one? I've never... I'd get one. I've never... If I was you, I'd get one. Come... I all, whenever I go, I always bring a woman with me, so it's never like invite one for. A, so I like invite a third. Throw her a roofie so I can get a lady boy. Like <laughs> I roofie her, but not to have sex with her, so that I can have sex with her. Can you imagine um, a girl wakes up in Thailand with you? Yeah, and you're like, what happened last night? And only you, you fell know asleep. That you had a lady boy. All yeah. Night long. Why? Um, the and there's like weird stains on the sheets. Like you're going the, to Christmas in Thailand. I've gone like three years. Thailand. Yeah. Three Why? different years Why I've Thailand? gone. I do a show in, in uh, Bangkok. Oh. And then I do a show. I'm going to do a show in Chiang Mai this time. Chiang, Chiang Mai, yeah. Uh, it's really fun. And You've and never gone to Asia. Have you done shows in Asia or Europe? I've only gone there to travel. I've never done stand-up. It's, a, it's fun as hell. Like, I did a show. I did a weekend in Singapore one time. And it was like... It's How, so uh, crazy. You connect that well with an audience. With a, with They're an just audience. expats. Oh, yeah. So they're just Americans. That's all it is, right? There was a guy, I was standing in front of a club in Singapore, and they're really dingy clubs. That's what's also fun about it. It's yeah. like 80 people. but And they're so fucking grateful you're there. They can't believe it. Because nobody goes. Nobody's there. Right. Uh, and the guy, I was standing on the street in Singapore, and a black American dude walks up and he goes, Neil Brennan from Joe Rogan is here? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't think anyone's ever said that. <laughs> Uh, That's a reference that almost will never get made on Earth. Yeah, Neil Brennan from Joe Rogan. That Rogan. could have echoed through the universe, and everyone would be like, "I've yeah, never heard anybody n- say that before." No, P- Presbot, anything? <laughs> never heard of it. <laughs> never once been said in all of the information. Um, so yeah, so you go and you, and I also like my hours like close, but I don't know how close. Who opens for you in Singapore? Know, some lo- a local person, an expat. Uh, yeah, or like a British person who lives there. So weird. That's, yeah. It's just like, it's kind of like locals anywhere. Yeah. Where it's like, all right. Do you bring someone on the road with you traditionally or no? I d- brought Fahim the last time I was on the road, and yeah. then this time I didn't bring anyone, and I liked it better. When you brought nobody? Yeah. Why do you think? You don't want Because the- I like having a, lo- I don't mind having a local. Sure. And but it's then to easier. Fill your days. I don't, I don't, I don't do all that. I don't play all that. You just go right to the hotel and then go to the thing? I just, like, go to exercise. I'll go eat. I don't know. I, I, I'll i Zoom. You know how I am with my Zooms. I know with you and the goddamn I'll do a Zoom. I just had, like, the days are not that, I'm not, they're not that hollow to me. Yeah, I get it. I always just felt like when I could start taking somebody, especially if it was a good friend, it was just another way to also just see a good friend a lot. That, to me, yeah. was, like, the big break. It was like. But I don't you get, did you, who'd you bring out? Oh, Chris O'Connor, he's been coming with my buddy Chris O'Connor. He's great. He York. lives here? He lives in New York. Oh. Yeah, and, and and that's it. So I don't see him a lot. Yeah. So it's almost like that was the that's like how I get to see one of my good friends. Is like, yeah, that's that's a good idea. You're, no, never like you're meeting to me. me in the city. It's great. Yeah. You know, like, it's like you're having an affair with Chris O'Connor. 
I, I well, it's not like I am. I mean, I am. Except <laughs> the sex isn't as good as I thought it would was going to be. But now I have to keep up appearances. So yeah, we have. We, you don't want to hurt his feelings. No, I mean, what? It's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell him he's fucking shitty it's my in bed. Homie, man. I'm not it's gonna, my fucking bro, bro. What am I gonna fucking let him down? But that, to me, that was the that was the hap the happiest point of the growth of my career. Like, you don't really notice when your career is growing and stand up wise when you're getting bigger. Like, at some point, you do kind of turn around. And you're like, holy fuck, there's a lot more people than I ever fucking knew yeah. I was in a room with. But the one thing I did notice truly along the ride was being able to afford to take somebody. Yeah, which makes me would made me feel. It just made that made me feel good. That is also a moment I don't think many comics are, know how to articulate, but you'll go from selling 20 tickets, maybe, maybe, and then one day you it does hit you in the weirdest time. You don't kind of, you don't really expect it, but you'll be on stage rhythmically doing your thing and you'll have like a little lapse and look up and be like, this is a fuckload of people. Yeah. It, 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 that, like that will never cease to amaze. It, it doesn't happen often, but when it does hit me, it is strange that you're like, there's 2,000 fucking people. Two yeah. thousand people is such a strange that's such a and like made plans. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the part of it that you cannot fathom. Yeah. You can't fathom like we're gonna see Santino. Come on, babe, that's Santino. Like, what? Yeah. What do you mean? That is what they that is what the girl is saying. What? What why? He's gross. Go with Ryan. He's gross. Just take your buddy. <laughs> his I his beard looks like it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually gotten way more female fans to the show, which I fucking love. And I'll notice more now that girls will bring girlfriends. It won't just have to be couples anymore. Great. I love when I see a girl with a girlfriend, I'm like, that is that's the W I want to keep getting. Because a lot of times it's a guy and his, and yeah. his buddy. Or a couple. Yeah. But what turns me on the most about couples is when the girl comes up to me and says, like, he never met heard of you before. I introduced him to you. Yeah. It, that is the that's like mountaintop shit for me. But we all know the, in terms of like the hierarchy of best recognitions, hmm. foreigners. 100%. Undoubtedly. It's un, it's unbeatable. You're like, what? How? <laughs> I I hear what? your your podcast. I love what you, this, what you are to me is important. It's so silly. Bobby's such an asshole. Such a jerk, but you, so fun for me. It is you. That's it. Yeah. And you're like, do you, did you, did, so does, does the humor, all the humor translate? No. 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 Some, like some, no. It's almost like it's not for them. It's like, yeah. do people in your country like me? No. 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 They don't, they would, you're no. too angry. I the think. way you look is no. Yeah. For them. Yeah. But <laughs> like, I, but I like it. But me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's something, because there, there's something like, it's like, a, if it's like, there's something maternal or something about it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, buddy. You're like, oh man, you want to stick I, around? Or? Yeah, like, do you, what do you need? <laughs> Can I take you out? I take you out to eat or something, and end this night well with you. Yeah, yeah. foreigners, number one, number one, number one answer. It feels the most um, gratifying. Any other kind of American is uh, whatever, fine. Yeah, even if you get like, you know, uh, even if you get someone that you're like, you like my stuff. Yeah. Still doesn't impress you the way a foreigner does. No, can't. Ath professional athlete, you're like, okay. <laughs> foreigner, any foreigner. Right. Any old foreigner. Yeah. And it's a fucking bonanza. All the foreigners out there, we had some global. We're global. Oh. Start listening and watching. Watch blocks right now. Please. Please. <laughs> please. We need fucking it. please. We need it. And also, I don't know if we can even talk about it. You can say no. But you, Neil's going to be coming back with a podcast that he's got. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to start. Well, I'm going on the road. I'm going back on the road. Are you really? How yeah. fast? Uh, the Yanuar? first dates are in uh, the new year? March. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. We got some time. But like, go on my website. Go on Neil Brennan. Com Neil Brennan. Slash, com slash, slash shows. shows. Or yeah. just go to Neil Brennan. Or just go to Neil Brennan. Brennan. You guys know what's up. But top. isn't it really weird when you're like, just go to AndrewSantino.com and they're like, where do I go from there? And you're like, <laughs> like you do I any other know, website man. that you've ever gone to. Click, click some shit. Go to photos. First, go to photos, the and then like. go to webmaster, <laughs> and then go to mailing list. Here it is. Go to photos, save one to your desktop, or screenshot it. <laughs> Reverse Google engine search the photo. Uh huh. Come back. Come back. Find a show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pick a city that you like in your mind that mm -hmm. you'll travel to. Mm -hmm. Go to neilbrennan.com. Watch blocks, please. Yes. It would mean a lot to both of us. Yes. Uh, and then I'm going to do a blocks podcast. Are where, you really? Oh, yeah. well, that's the right. 
where I ask about. people, blocks is basically the things in my life that make me feel uh, insane or isolated or crazy or alone. It's like the drugs, alcohol, being single. I don't drink, really do drugs. I'm not married, don't have kids, uh, not a good liberal, racially sort of weird, whatever. So it's all those. So I'm going to go over other people's blocks with them. Love it. Including Andrew Santino. And you got some great guests lined up uh, already. I do. Well, we yes. can't tell you the names. Can't but tell you, but uh, you'll, you will be uh, um, uh, not impressed. You'll, you'll, uh, it's what you will have come to expect from Neil Brennan. How about that? Nothing but the best. Nothing but the best from Brennan. Uh, we end the show the same way. You know, one word or one phrase into that camera. It's going to go down in history as the third or fourth, third time you've done the show, maybe? Third or fourth time you've done third. the show? Third time. And it will be locked up forever. And so whatever the word of the phrase is, just remember, uh, this is it. And it can't be watch blocks because we've already said that enough. So whatever else. You really think? Yeah. Fuck, what should I say? I was going to say watch blocks. <laughs> Presbot. Presbot. You know what I mean?